Hey everybody, we are here. We are at episode zero, which is not the first episode, it's episode zero. First episode is next week. But I just wanted to give you a overview of what the show is going to look like, and I wanted to have this sort of practice session because there's a lot of moving parts for this, so I wanted to make sure that uh, I know what to do, and you know what to do, and hopefully things will go pretty smoothly today. So let me um, let you know that I'm watching the comments, and I will be able to see your comments. Let me... Uh... Okay. Um... The first thing I need you to do is answer the question that I have on the screen right now. Let me know what city you're joining from today. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, one of the things I'm going to tell you later on in today's episode is that um, my dogs are part of, will be involved, let's put it that way. Um, because I'm doing this from home, and as some of you who work remotely know, uh, you have issues when you're trying to have a meeting or a conference call or whatever, and you have um, dogs or kids. In my case, uh, kids are grown, so it's dogs. Um, so right before I went live, uh, one of my dogs started barking at something he heard. she heard downstairs. So... Uh, yeah, I'm like, stop barking before we go live, please. That would be nice. <laughs> okay. So I see we have a few people lurking. Let me know that uh, you're out there and uh, give me a smile by leaving a comment so I can interact with you. Um, so right now we're in the... Um, pre-show. Um, so the pre-show is uh, going to be, I'm testing it out. Uh, I'm starting with 10 minutes. If that's too long, then I'll lower it. Um, but uh, it gives people an opportunity to stop working and find a place uh, that's quiet and be able to join the show on a weekly basis. Um, and also it's a time where uh, we can have a lot of interaction um, before we even start the show. So people basically can get settled in and, um, uh, you know, we can dialogue back and forth. Um, all right. So I, I just going to check my phone to make sure that my iPad's not failing me. So one of the things, uh, yep. My iPad was failing me. <laughs> Hold on a second. I want to see if I can get the iPad to show the same thing my phone does. That's a shame. I go out and come back in. This is why we have the pre-show. Yep, Linda. Just noticing. Thank you. Yeah, the iPad's acting differently than my phone. Okay, I'll use my phone. Um, hey, Lisa. Hey, Linda. Hey, Pat. Jennifer, thank you for answering my question. I was trying to remember the other day where, where you are in Texas. <laughs> I know you're in Texas, but I was wondering where you were. Okay, um, Lisa's in Columbus. Uh, I have some friends in the industry in Columbus. Uh, Linda's in Miami. Elizabeth Marie, which is Elizabeth to me. Oh, I made a rhyme. Uh, is in Long Island, and uh, I hope to see her soon. Uh, and Pat is currently in Virginia, but actually lives about 10 minutes from me. So. <laughs> uh, Lana, you made it! Yay! Lana's in her car on the way to the beach, which I'm totally jealous uh, she has a rental that she gets to use, so totally jealous on that. Okay, so we have five minutes left. Um, 
Let me know if you're just joining. Let me know what city you're joining from today. And thank you to those of you that... Um... <laughs> okay, I'm staring at my phone. And uh, another message came in from someone at work. So Amit, thank you for letting me know that you are logged in. Okay. Uh, this is cool. As you see from Sid's uh, comment at the very top, he has experience with this, and sometimes the comments are um, not reliable. They don't come up exactly as they should, which is a shame because I'd rather use my iPad that has a bigger screen, you know? Um, yep. I'll have to play around with the iPad because it definitely works differently. Okay, but I can use my phone. Um, all right, so uh, what I have for you today is an overview of um, the survey results and um, the uh, format for the show, like what I'm planning to do and how I'm planning to do it. And then also um, uh, some, I guess, live etiquette. Not really etiquette, because that implies that you don't know how to act. But just uh, how you can use the Facebook Live to um, interact, in case you haven't done a lot of lives. I mean, I personally have learned this in the last two months. I didn't do a lot of lives before this. So, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so it's three minutes and, uh, rather than waste your time, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so, uh, instead of waiting for the counter to count down, I'll just, uh, switch to the show itself. Okay. So, uh, the first thing that uh, I get to do for you is uh, play my new intro that I have, which is pretty darn cool. So let's do that now. So that's called an intro and this is called a lower third. So, uh, pretty darn cool to put all the pieces together. And I have to say, there are a lot of pieces. You guys know me, I work in a technology field and I'm used to the stress of learning new software and trying to get tech technology to work. But um, this was a whole new thing for me to learn how to go live and to go live, um, I guess in a semi-professional way, as opposed to just live on my phone and uh, not following some of the protocols for going live. So as some of you that have worked with me know that I don't like to do anything half-assed, so I really wanted to learn how to do this right. But because of that, it's a lot of moving pieces, okay? So the first thing um, I wanna show you is uh, our agenda for today. So we're going to go over the survey results and then I'm going to talk about uh, the show format and uh, then how you can participate. And then I'm going to give you a sneak peek or tell you, I should say, about what we're going to do next week. OK, which I think you're going to be pretty excited about. All right. So I gave a survey. Uh, uh, it's been about four or five months ago because I thought I was going to be doing the pre-recorded version. So I sent out the survey and I asked people um, what they um, as far as, uh, I gave them seven show topics and I had them vote one to 10. So here's a copy of the survey, an example of, um, somebody going through the survey and I basically asked seven questions, like I said, and had them read them. And then I had that automatically feed to a Google sheet, which automatically calculated the averages, which, uh, for me made it easy for me to figure out what you guys really wanted to hear about from me. So, but what happened was, is that when it was all said and done and I had hundreds of responses to the survey, I was like, 
Okay, so your number one thing you want to hear from me is that. Interesting. So I'm going to do a countdown of what your survey results were. So from the bottom to the top, the one that you didn't quite like all the way to the one that you chose as the number one. Keeping in mind that I'm litigation support guru and I talk about legal technology, okay? That's a hint. All right, so the first one is uh, bloopers. So that was an, uh, an option and uh, a lot of people voted for it. A lot of people said they would love to see bloopers. A lot of people said they could use some humor during the day, which is funny. Um, one person actually said, I don't have time for humor. I, if, if I'm watching your show, I, I, you know, I need it to be productive. And I was like, oh, so uh, bloopers at the bottom of the list. And because I'm not doing pre-recorded anymore, I can't really add bloopers in after the fact from the recording. So you're getting the bloopers live now. OK. All right. So the next one is uh, the next from the bottom is events and conferences. I was thinking that I could, um, you know, record things and while I'm at conferences, because I go to a bunch of conferences, um, I could do some video recording and in this case I could go live. Um, and then also I could not do that, but I could come back from a conference and tell you what, you know, what I thought about it. So that was uh, number six out of seven. All right. The next one is interviews, and um, I put, I think, in parentheses in the survey that it, I could interview people in the industry, I could interview former students, I could interview people that I've mentored, that I've helped find jobs, I could interview, you know, um, some people that everyone has heard from, you know, some people that go around speaking all the time. I have lots of friends, I can ask them to, you know, come on the show. Um, so that's where that one was coming from. And that ended up some, sort of in the middle. Um, so, all right. So number four is audience questions. So that one's getting closer to the top. Um, and what I was thinking there is, I mean, I get a lot of emails with questions. So <laughs> I was thinking that I could just, you know, do a show that answers questions. And when it was going to be pre-recorded, you would have to submit the questions. But now that it's live, I could do sort of an ask me anything uh, I could gear that around a particular topic um, or I can, uh, it can be open-ended, which is probably not a good idea, or it could be, um, you know, focused on one particular thing. I can let you know what that topic is and then you can, you know, come on live and ask your questions or submit them ahead of time. So I have some ready to go. That would be nice. All right. So topic number three is video tutorials. So uh, as most of you know, uh, I did Fast Tip Friday video tutorials every Friday for two years. So um, I put in a survey that I can continue to do that because a lot of people enjoy them. Um, so I could mix it up. Some shows will, will be, you know, like this and others I could, you know, um, either do a live tutorial where I'm sharing the screen and showing you something or I could pre-record a little snippet of something and then play it for you and then we could talk about it. So I'm going to continue to do video tutorials, especially since that ended up being your topic number three. Okay. And then um, next to last was recommendations. So that made sense, you know, just pe hearing from me about, you know, things that I recommend software wise or uh, tool wise or you know, just in general, in dirt industry, anything that I find that I want to share that I think you think is cool. And I do have some of those in mind. So that's pretty cool. So that that landed near the top. OK, so are you ready? The number one thing that you guys chose from Amy Bowser Rollins at Litigation Support Guru is professional development. <laughs> and I was like, what? Professional development? Uh, I was like, okay, I do actually help people all the time find jobs and I do give them, you know, mentoring around professional development. I do help people with the resumes, you know, occasionally, not, not a whole lot. Cause that's a lot of work. Linda knows well. Um, so, uh, anyways, your number one choice was professional development. So then I had in my mind what professional development is. 
But then I was like, okay, well, now that they want that as number one, what do you think professional development is? So I have this question for you. How do you define professional development? Um, Jennifer says it happened to her, too, when she posted a survey. She was surprised to see this top choice. That's cool, Jennifer. You're not the only one that got surprised. Um, Dave, I could open each episode with a lawyer joke. You know, I don't tell jokes well, so I don't know if that would go over well. My family, my dad tells jokes well. My brothers tell jokes well. I don't tell jokes well, so I don't know if that would work for me. But duly noted. I know one person um, that's learning how to live stream that actually added some memes as in, in between what she was teaching. But again, I don't do memes. I don't do GIFs. I just did my first GIF on Facebook recently. I don't know. I'm, I live under a rock, sort of. Um, uh, okay, so let me know what you think professional development is. Um, I'll come back and look at the comments after the show's over and see if you guys say anything that I'm not expecting. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, okay, so... The next thing I want to go over is uh, how to get notified of um, the show. So um, Facebook has a couple of different options for that. Uh, one of them is what you guys might have already seen. And that is that I can schedule the post up to seven days ahead of time. And since I know I'm going to go live weekly on Fridays, I can do that. Um, and then I can pin it. You see in the top right hand corner, I've pinned it. Um, and I can, you know, put it at the top of the feed of my page. So that's one way is you can go to the page and click that get reminder, which some of you already did. So, uh, another way is that on my page, you can, you know, if you already click to follow the page, you can additionally click on the drop down arrow next to following and go down to the notification section and click the pencil. And then... There's um, a couple different options, but down at the bottom is live videos. And there's an option that's not selected and should be, I think, that says uh, all live posts. So then you'll definitely get notified every time I go live, regardless of whether you set the get reminder. OK. All right. So the next thing I want to bring up is, um, oh, Jennifer. Professional development, in my opinion, is anything that helps me improve what I do for a living. That's good. Some of which I get from business coach and other from courses and workshops. Uh, for me, it's reading and researching. I wish more people did reading and researching <laughs> to gain new knowledge. See, I'm a lifelong learner, and I think you are too, Jennifer. Uh, so it comes natural to me to just learn and soak up stuff, which is why we are here today. Um, but, uh, some people don't want to put in the work. So, uh, I recently did a blog post, um, about four people that I helped and I highlighted all the hard work that they each did in order to get to their goal of getting a job in litigation support. So it's pretty darn cool. Um, okay. So patience, um, a couple different ways I need your patience. One is that, um, so I'm a one woman show here. I have, um, I have a lot of things going on. I have a lot of equipment in a small space and I'm what's considered the producer of the show. So I'm actually, uh, one day I'm going to show you behind the scenes and I'm going to show you what all this looks like. Um, but I'm actually producing. So when you see me turn my head to the left, I'm looking at my monitor and clicking on things to put them up on the screen for you. Um, and uh, I also have uh, my commenting you know, device, which was my iPad and now my iPhone uh, on the right hand side. Um, but and I also have a what's called a MIDI controller. You can Google that. But basically, it's a device that um, here in front of me that allows me to push buttons that I've set up as shortcuts, sort of like running a macro uh, instead of using my mouse and clicking in the software. And the idea behind that is that I can be tactile and I can sort of move my hand right now and do something on it without you noticing. Uh, so please, uh, at least for the first couple of weeks, 
okay, maybe a, a month. Uh, could you please be patient with me as I learn how to do all of this? I'm sure it's going to become second nature. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that uh, in learning over the last eight weeks how to go live, um, everyone is talking about how buggy Facebook is. So even if I do everything right, I can get, you know, the live stream going and, you know, whatever the next step is, uh, Facebook will fail me. Um, I don't know if you notice, you probably do if you're on Facebook any length of time. I'm not on Facebook all the time, but uh, uh they roll out updates constantly without any notice whatsoever. So one day you log in and your app looks completely different. So when you're talking about live streaming to Facebook, um, it affects their changes constantly affect what we're doing. So it could be a little buggy. All right. Moody internet. So, uh, Pat says she agrees on reading and research. I do a lot of that right now in my new job. Oh, good for you, Pat. Barbara, second vote for lawyer jokes. Okay, duly noted. I don't know if I can, maybe I can just do a screenshot of one. Would that be okay, Dave and Barbara? Um, okay, um, moody internet. So, you know, for those of you in our industry that work from home, you know that you have to uh, get reliable internet at home in order to work remotely um, and to use any of the document review tools that we use in litigation support, we need to have reliable internet. Um, uh, in, you know, when we're clicking next, next, next on the documents, we need it to respond quickly, right? Uh, so here I am in my house on the internet, live streaming. And what I've noticed is a couple of Fridays in the past, when I knew I was going to do Friday at lunchtime, I've noticed that uh, somebody in my neighborhood, I'm just, I don't know what it is, but somebody in my neighborhood, I'm guessing, is stealing my internet. Uh, anyways, it's a little faulty. Sometimes it goes out for no reason. So... Um, I'm hardwired. I'm not on wireless because you don't do live streaming on wireless, just FYI. Uh, but things could go wrong. So if something goes wrong and I can't connect to the live stream or I get disconnected or whatever, I will reconnect right away, but it will be a new stream. So you'll have to go back to the page and look for my new stream. Okay. All right. You know how some people say dogs are not allowed? I have the opposite of that. Dogs are allowed. Dogs are allowed, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to set up a dog cam uh, because my dogs are with me all the time when I'm at home, okay? Um, let's see if I can get this set up pretty quickly for you. We're not going to say their names because that would be, that would interrupt them, okay? All right, so... All right, All right, so, so these are my, my two, two German Schweitzer pointers, pointers that are laying on the floor right, right next to me. And, and occasionally they will probably uh, interrupt or try to pet me. I mean, you know, get petted while I'm doing a live show. That would be fun. Uh, but also they're going to make noise. Um, so it just is what it is. Um, Linda, I thought you'd love that. Um, uh, but... You know, I said in my uh, live last night that I definitely want to make this casual. And the reality of, of it is that I'm uh, at home. So my dogs are with me at all times. And I don't really want to, you know, lock them up or, you know, do anything like that. Um, Linda says, I think we should look at increasing your skills and making yourself more valuable professionally. That's excellent, Linda. Very good. You know, the comments uh, come and go, like they don't um, update. Barbara, I know you love dogs. I love that about you. Okay, um, so dogs are loud, meaning that they are gonna come and go. You're probably, <laughs> so sometimes they'll be right here and I will be, you know, petting them and you might see their head pop up, okay? Um, but otherwise, I'm going to set up a camera so I can switch right to them uh, just for fun. You know, if you have dogs, you'll understand. Um, okay. Now, along those lines, in addition to dog sightings, we will have occasional barking. The yellow lab in the middle, Sandy, she barks at every noise outside of my house. So 
regardless of if somebody knocked on the door for a delivery, if she hears a car door shut, she will bark. So we will have occasional barking in the background. We will deal with it, okay? All right, so the show uh, as an overall thing, the umbrella overall, is that it's educational, obviously. Um, that's what I do. That's what Litigation Support Guru is, and that's what this show is. It's going to be educational. It's just a different uh, format to, to teach you guys stuff. Okay, so along those lines, some of these shows will be what my husband calls talking head when he refers to football uh, commentators. That's how I learned that term. Yeah, from my husband. Uh, so what we're doing today is talking head. Uh, so some of them will be like that. Other times I'll have guest interviews. So that means that I will show their webcam and my camera and you guys will see both and you'll see us having a conversation and that'll be really cool. Um, like we said before, some of them will be ask me anything. So uh, we'll figure out, you know, what that looks like on the screen in terms of asking questions. I'll come up with something creative, I'm sure. Um, and then, uh, like we said, like you asked for, we're going to have tutorials and that could be a live tutorial. If you're just joining us, I already said this, but it could be a live tutorial or it could be a pre-recorded tutorial that I play and then we talk about. Okay. Now, along the lines of tutorials, um, I, Hey, Sherry. Good to see you here. Um, when I teach uh, in the paralegal program in person uh, in at Georgetown, I have learned that the students really appreciate having some sort of handout with each class. So I'm thinking about doing that for this too. Um, if it doesn't make sense to do it for a particular episode like today, it doesn't really make sense. But next week it makes sense. Yeah, there's a little teaser again. Uh, I'm going to do some, create some handouts, uh, so that you guys can, you know, download and take with you. So, um, I want to let you know that I, okay, so I did, I committed to doing Fast Tip Friday tutorials every Friday. Do you know how much work that is? Oh, uh, I guess over a two year period, there were three times, and if Nina's watching, she'll start laughing right now. There were only three times that I got smart and I batch recorded them. So I did like six to eight at a time and then I didn't have to worry about it for, you know, a period of time. That's the smart way. Um, <clears throat> other times I would teach on Thursday evening and then I would come home on Thursday evening and quickly record a Fast Tip Friday that went out the next morning. Okay. So this time around, I'm getting smarter. And I've decided to do seasons. That's why I called this season one, episode zero. So the idea with seasons is that there'll be X number of episodes, somewhere around 10-ish uh, episodes, just like TV. And then I will stop and then I'll take a break, which I will need. And then I will change up the set because I like to do that. So that gives me an opportunity to change up the set and come back in a few weeks later and we'll be in season two and the set will be different. So that'd be cool. Um, Dave, I forgot to mention that you're in Connecticut. So that's cool. Yeah, so it's not updating the comments again. And I've seen other people that live stream uh, deal with this. So I'm going to close it and reopen it. Okay, cool. All right. Um, that's it for seasons. You guys get it. Uh, multicasting. So baby steps, as I said, uh, need your patience because um, not everybody's on Facebook. Uh, in my welcome email, when people subscribe to my stuff, uh, I say a bunch of stuff and at the bottom I say if you're a Facebook person you might want to you know like my page and I get responses from people saying I don't do Facebook uh, in my survey that I did recently um, I did a separate survey more recently um, asking if you're if you're locked down from you can't get to Facebook at work um, and I asked about Facebook and YouTube and most people are not locked down, but there was a significant number of people that specifically had Facebook locked down and not YouTube. 
So what I'm aiming to do is to live stream to both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. But baby steps. So I'm going to start with Facebook for a couple of weeks until I get the whole thing down. And then uh, I'm going to multicast to YouTube live at the same time. And the reason I need the baby steps is because you guys will be commenting in both places and I need to be able to be comfortable gathering the comments from both places. Okay. All right. So I mentioned this in um, both of the videos I did earlier this week, because this is the primary goal with going live for me. Um, I am a people person. I love interacting. I love seeing your comments right now. I like seeing these faces, you know, Sherry, I'm going to call you out because uh, Sherry is a very close friend of mine, but I don't see her often enough. So I love seeing her name in the comments. That's all that right there brightens my day. Okay. Um, so uh, this is all about engagement and it's between me and you, but it's also between you and each other. And I think as we go, um, you guys will get better and better at that. Um, some of the people that are in the comments already know how that works. Uh, they interact with each other and have side conversations. So uh, I think uh, you guys will learn that over time too, um, because it's pretty darn cool. Um, I was telling Lana yesterday, I was reminding Lana, um, Lana Shell, um, a good, good friend of mine. Uh, we did a Women in E Discovery um, group call of all the boards uh, a few years ago and Lana and I hosted it and we had chat for the first time ever and we had all 28 boards you know whoever could attend we held them I think we held two or three rounds of the calls and it was so awesome we had ladies we had women from all 28 chapters that were on the boards at the current time and they were interacting with each other for the first time ever usually it's you know segregated by boards uh, by whatever chapter you're running so uh, I want that again. Pat's watching on her Kindle Fire. <laughs> she figured out a way because she's a techie. Uh, okay. Uh, in case you don't know this, this is interesting to me because um, as I participated in other people's live streams, I saw people, it was obvious that they hadn't done this. And I do it all the time by default, partially because I like to zoom in on any video. Um, so when you're watching live, it gives you this option for click for more. And some people just leave the video in the stream and leave it the default size on the screen or on your phone or whatever. But if you click for more, it actually opens up the video. And just this week, it opened up, um, instead of a pop-up window, a, um, there's a name for that. I should know that. Uh, it, you know, brings up a window on top. Uh, it actually filled the screen this week. So another update that Facebook did that I noticed on the desktop. Um, uh, so anyways, I want you to see the video better. So if you want to, you can click for more. It'll zoom in on the um, video. Now, I think this is primarily desktop, um, but if people are watching on the desktop, that's an option. Um, and then another thing is that um, I didn't know this until I started learning about live and participating in live. So we all know that you have, you know, these emoticons that you can like someone's post. But hey, Rob, good to see you here. Um, you missed the dog section, Rob. <laughs> You'll have to go back and watch the replay. Uh, Okay, so when you click for more and you get the bigger video, on, on, underneath the video is another section of emoticons that look like this. And I've seen people that are hosting the show say things like, give me some hearts, like they're on Periscope, but they're not. Um, or give me some likes, you know. Well, the thing is with this option, you can click it multiple times. You can click it and click it and click it and send things across the screen, you know, uh, it's really cool that, that they, you know, add this. Now I think uh, on mobile, I don't know, but let me know on mobile, if you're on mobile right now, <laughs> things are flying across the screen. Yay, thank you. Um, uh, on mobile, uh, can you hit it more than once? I haven't really watched a lot of uh, live streams on mobile because I'm usually at home, but Anyways, I wanted to let you know that I might in the future at some point ask you to send some emoticons across the screen, okay? And when I say that, 
Thank you, Linda, let me, let, for letting me know. Yes, it works on mobile. Okay, cool. So I'm never going to be on Periscope, uh, but this is Periscopey. I made that up. Okay. Um, Jennifer's going to laugh at this one because I switched things up. Um, if we get a lot of comments and if I'm teaching something and people are asking questions, I'm going to ask you to, okay, probably shouldn't have said it that way. I'm going to request that you add a prefix before your question so that I can easily find your questions to me versus all the conversation going on in the comments. Okay. So if you can add, add, I'm having trouble talking. If you can add, ask colon and then ask your question during a future sh show, future episode, uh, that'll make it easier for me to scroll through like I'm doing here. And um, Lana says, yes, she got her phone to do it. Cool. Um, it'll make it easier for me to scroll through the comments because you know, this show is going to grow. We're going to have hundreds of comments, just so you know. And, uh, I want, <laughs> see, all you have to do is make things fly across the screen and I'm happy. Um, anyways, in the future, I will ask you, I will request that you put ask at the beginning of a question so I can find them easier. Okay. Uh, I think this is the last slide for this. Um, when you're watching the replay, so say you're not here live and you're not interacting with my questions right now, but then you're watching the replay and then I'm saying the same things. Uh, I think you should engage. I think you should interact with the replay again, because that's how it works with live streaming. I can go back and respond to those comments and it can last for like, you know, the next week until we do the next uh, show. So anyways, engage with the comments, uh, respond in the comments. Don't feel silly because you're watching the replay. Do it. Okay. All right. Here's a little tip that um, I share with anybody who'll listen because I watch a lot of videos. I watch, um, hey, Linda, you might want to uh, show your students this because you have video courses too. Um, so this is a Chrome plugin that I found almost two years ago, someone recommended it in a group I was in and I can't live without it now. And I'm encouraging you to watch my replays and you don't have to watch them in real time. Even with podcast episodes, I listen to them at one and a half speed. So when you're watching the replay, install this uh, Chrome uh, extension and see in the top left corner, uh, you can increase the speed that it's playing back and you can get through the replays faster which in my mind means that you actually watch the replays more often. So, okay, just going to give you a little tech tip for today. All right. little teaser for next week. Um, I do have a guest next week and the topic is pretty juicy. Okay. I say that kind of jokingly, but I have a friend who has a way to, for especially small firms, small to mid-sized firms, not big, big law like I work at, but uh, if you have a client that has text messages that you need to collect, this is for you. Uh, it's a really easy way to get text messages, me text messages collected for an e-discovery matter uh, in the right way and an easy way. And then when you get them, you can you know, pull them into whatever document database you're using. OK, so that's it for. Uh, today's uh, content. Um, let me just, <laughs> so Lisa is one of the people I shared that, uh, extension with, and she's saying, uh, she thanks me every day for sharing that. Okay. Um, great. All right, Lana, I'm so glad you made it, uh, as you're traveling to the beach. Thank you. Uh, thank you to everybody who made it here today. Uh, I'm really excited to get this off the ground and, you know, um, I'm just really excited about finally having a way to have a two way conversation with all the people in the litigation support guru community. So, I mean, there's a lot of people and, you know, I've, I'm just really, if you knew me in person, you'd know I'm a people person. So it really means a lot to me to be able to interact with you guys. Okay. So I will see you here uh, next Friday, same time, same place. And uh, thank you so much for showing up today.